Welcome to Broadway Church Online. We're so glad you've joined us today. My name is Victor, and you've joined us on week one of our brand new summer series, Yaffe, because you asked for it. In just a few moments, Pastor Darren will share a great message with us. But before we continue, I would love for you to hit the like button on this video as it helps spread what God is doing here at Broadway Church. And if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please do so right now. Today is also Celebrate Sunday. And as a church, we celebrate communion and baptism. So now is the time to gather your elements, some crackers or juice, and immediately after the sermon, one of our pastors will lead us in a time of communion. Now, in just a few moments, the worship team is going to come and lead us in a few songs. But before that happens, why don't you check out these videos? I've been in youth ministry working with teenagers for over seven years now. And when I think back to why I decided to be a youth pastor, I always go back to one encounter that I had. When I was 13 years old, I walked into our youth building, a room that was a lot like this one. Now, at the time, no one knew how alone I felt and how much I was hurting. And it was one youth leader who came over to me and he said, hey, you're Nathan, right? And I was shocked. I mean, he remembered my name. We spent the next 30 minutes or so playing some of the games in the youth room, and then I left. It seems so insignificant, but because I felt like I mattered in that moment, I kept coming back to youth group, and God grabbed a hold of my life. Now, I'm so grateful that I get to be a part of a church where moments like that happen. Now, here's the thing. When I shared that encounter, you may have pictured that youth leader as like a cool 20 year old who, who dressed cool and who talked cool. And maybe you wanna be a part of youth ministry, but you think that's not me. You think I'm a parent, I'm older. I don't know what kids are into these days. No one will wanna to talk to me. But actually that leader was a 40 year old dad of one of my friends at youth group. It didn't matter to me that he didn't look like me or that he didn't talk like me. What mattered was that he cared. He took the time to get to know me. Listen, I am so eternally grateful for every one of our youth leaders. Every week they give of their time and their energy to help raise up the next generation to know Jesus better. And whenever I ask somebody who's maybe a bit older, if they wanna join our team, I always get the same response. I'm too old, I can't relate. That dad probably thought the same thing, but God used him anyway. Listen, we need the whole church to come together and invest into the lives of young people. We need those who are younger and who can relate better. And we also need those who are older. If you can play ping pong and remember a name of a student and show that you care, you can do youth ministry. And so, if you have a desire to help raise up the next generation, please consider applying to be part of our youth team. That means whether you're a 22 year old college student or a 50 year old mom of four, you never know the difference that God could use you to make in the life of a young person. Thank you, Broadway Church, for empowering young people. Let's do this together. Hey there, my name is Andy and I'm one of the pastors here at Broadway Church. To this day, I will not forget the person who, for whatever reasons, decided to be my Sunday school teacher. She didn't know it at the time, but her willingness to teach me about the Bible, how to read scripture, and to apply God's word into my life changed my life forever. As a church here at Broadway, we have this great opportunity to invest in the lives of people forever. If you are a volunteer, a leader, a ministry worker, a prayer partner, a pastor, or you're searching ways to get involved here at Broadway Church, we would like to invite you for the very first time an in-house conference simply called the Leadership Day. This day is designed to minister to you as you minister to others. The day is built around how to pour into you as you pour into people all around you. But not only that, it is a day to celebrate and leverage what God is already doing in our church to be the church to our city and beyond. Our theme comes from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. He creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work he does, the good work he has gotten ready for us to do, work we better be doing. You see, God is calling us, you and me, for Jesus to work in us and through us. This is the purpose of the Leadership Day. 
Would you consider joining us for our very first in-house conference on September 17th? We'll be having special speakers, worshiping together, breakout sessions for ministry, and lunch will be provided. All the details are on our website. In fact, you can even sign up starting today. This will be a great day together as we make a difference in the lives around us as a church and beyond. If you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to me anytime and my email is on the screen. We are excited to see you at the Leadership Day on September 17th. much for joining us today. My name is Megan and I am the Vancouver Campus Kids Pastor. We have a ton of stuff happening here at Broadway for you and your family, so why don't you check these things out? Do you have a dance background? Did you know dancing can also be an act of worship? Broadway's dance ministry is coming back. We are looking for experienced dancers who are passionate about dancing and use their talents to serve God. If you are interested, please send us a video of you dancing. It doesn't have to be a professional recording. A simple video on your phone would work. TikTok doesn't count. Contact dance at broadwaychurch.com. Episode 14 of the Broadway Church Leadership Podcast is available wherever you download your podcasts. Come and hear the conclusion of our three-part discussion on how to reach the next generation. Our next-gen staff at Broadway Church have a great discussion about loving our students well. Parents, you will especially appreciate the material covered in this podcast. On September 17th, we are calling all our leaders and volunteers at Broadway Church to join us for our first ever in-house conference called Broadway Leadership Day to equip and empower you and your ministry. We will have a couple of main sessions and then breakout sessions for specific ministries where you can connect with each other. The cost is $10 for lunch. Please register online through our website. And if you are looking at volunteering at Broadway, feel free to join us too. We are so excited to invite you to Kids Camp this year. Join us for Knights of North Castle, quest for the King's armor, as we discover how to be strong in the Lord by exploring how we put on the armor of God. We'll be running from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. July 18th to the 22nd. Preteen Camp will also be running during this same week. Stay tuned for more details. For more information and to register, go to bway.ca slash kidscamp. Join us for the next adult Bible class series called Resilient Faith. This class will run for four weeks and will go over the lessons from the book of Daniel. It begins July 3rd at 10.15 a.m. in the lower auditorium at the Vancouver campus. Check out our website for more information or contact discipleship at broadwaychurch.com. You Asked For It, Yaffe, is our summer sermon series where we tackle your questions. And we are so excited to offer a midweek small group to discuss the Yaffe message from that week. We are calling it Yaffe Talks. If you are looking for good coffee and good conversation with good friends, we would love to have you join us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. at the Vancouver campus in the Lower Auditorium, starting on June 29th. Sign up and details are on the website. If you missed anything that I said, you can visit our website, broadwaychurch.com, for more information on our ministries and events. And while you're there, make sure to connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Well, good morning, Broadway Church. It's such a beautiful Sunday, isn't it? Let's stand together. Let's worship our God. Let's sing this out, all we look. All we look to the sun, set our eyes on our Savior, see the image of love, sing His praises forever. All, all we look to the sun. Salvation, salvation, tearing through the dead of night. See the kingdom burst into color at the speed of light. Freedom, shaking up the atmosphere. As the shadows fade into nothing as a day of 
beyond the skies above Love reaching out for us The everlasting one Jesus our God Oh, all we look to the sun Set our eyes on the sea that again be on the skies be on the skies above love reaching out for us the everlasting one Jesus our God all we look to the sun hey all we look to the sun yeah Join this house this morning. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Come on, see that out. Oh, I am a child of God. Let's declare that today, this morning.
Shame, I hear my mocking voice. 
Thank you for this morning. Thank you that we're able to gather and worship you and celebrate you today, God. Thank you for being such a kind and giving and caring Father. And thank you for always providing your arms for us to rest on. I just pray for this morning. I pray for the message. I pray for each and every person here, God. And I just pray that you bless us on with our day today. And we love you today and always. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Broadway Church. Thank you, worship team, for leading us in worship today. You've joined us on what we like to call Celebrate Sunday. And today, we celebrate communion and baptism. If you have made the decision to follow Jesus and considering taking the next step to be baptized in water, please visit bway.ca slash baptism for all the information you need. Now don't forget to get your elements ready as one of our pastors will lead us in communion right after the sermon. We are now going to transition into our time of giving. If you are new to Broadway Church, please feel under no obligation to give. You do not have to pay to watch or attend church. However, if you would like to financially support what God is doing here at Broadway Church, we would love for you to do that now. Our preferred way of giving is for you to go to the Give tab on our website and check out the online banking giving option. We can accept your credit card over the phone if you call the church office. You can come in in person from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. during the week if you want to drop it off. Or you can also use text to give If you text the word GIVE to the number on the screen, it'll walk you through the prompts to get set up. And finally, you can mail checks to the church. We'd like to encourage you to take some time after today's sermon to discuss what stood out or spoke to you the most, perhaps with some friends or family members. We also want to help you by providing some discussion questions immediately after the sermon, so please stay tuned. Once again, Pastor Darren will share a great message with us in just a moment, but you still have time to hit the like button on this video as it really does help us reach many more people and share the good news of Jesus. Thank you once again for joining us today. Well, it's summertime, and that can only mean one thing, the You Asked For It series. What's the You Asked For It series? For decades now, every summertime, we do a poll, and we let you as a congregation choose the topics that we address. And today, we're opening the series with one of the most complex and frustrating questions a human being can ask. Now, while it was framed in different ways by different people, it can be summed up like this. How do you cope with personal pain? Now, there are different approaches a person can take when responding to this question. There are different reasons why people ask this question. 
Some people want to know, how can a loving and powerful God permit the presence of evil and pain and suffering in our world? They're looking for an intellectual, rational response to the issue of suffering. I've addressed the existence of evil, pain, and suffering from that perspective numerous times here at Broadway. In fact, if you're wanting or needing a more philosophical, theological response, check out our skeptic course online, where I offer a 45-minute thorough response to the problem posed by the presence of evil, pain, and suffering in our world. With that in mind, I'm going to approach this question from an entirely different angle today. Over the next few moments, I'm going to approach this topic from a more personal perspective. I'm not going to show you how to answer the question of pain and suffering in our world. I am, however, going to show you how to personally navigate the presence of pain and suffering in your own life. So over the next few moments, I'm going to do my best to offer some practical, personal, and pastoral advice regarding what to do when pain is closing in around you, be it physical pain, mental pain, emotional pain, spiritual pain. How do you cope when things in your life are going sideways or even backwards? How do you cope when life hurts? Over the next few moments, I'm going to do my best to combine personal experience with biblical principles as we seek to answer the question, how do you cope with personal pain? So let's begin. One of my favorite stories, you've probably heard me tell it before, is of the Catholic priest who was adjusting his microphone as he was stepping out onto the platform. Now, if you've been raised in a more formal liturgical setting, you know that a priest or the the pastor would stand at the front and they would say, God be with you. And then the congregation in unison would all respond, and also with you. Well, on this day, the Catholic priest stepped out onto the platform and he was fiddling with his microphone. And he looked down into his mic and he said into the microphone, there's something wrong with this thing. And the congregation said, and also with you. Have you ever felt that there was something wrong in your life? I mean, how can you tell? When I'm driving in my vehicle, I have a dashboard in front of me, and there are dashboard lights that go off telling me that there's something wrong with my car. Now, some issues may not warrant a dashboard light, but they still get your attention. Maybe it's a slight pull to the right or an annoying little squeak. Well, your life is a lot like your vehicle. Your life also has ways of telling you that there's something wrong. And the first piece of advice that I can give you when you're personally navigating the presence of pain in your life is to pay careful attention to what's going on within you. Pay careful attention to what's going on within you. Now, biblically speaking, there's a place for self-examination. Biblically speaking, we're encouraged to be self-aware. The Apostle Paul, a leader in the early church, he told the Corinthian Christians, he said, examine yourselves to see whether you're in the faith. Test yourselves. The prophet Jeremiah told God's people, let's examine our ways and test them, and let's return to the Lord. When you feel unsettled, when you find yourself constantly thinking or doing things that you don't want to be thinking or doing, Consider such moments as warning lights flashing on the dashboard of your life. You would be foolish to ignore them, because if you are not self-aware, you will self-destruct. Now take my advice on this, folks. Warning lights are ignored at your own peril. Years ago, I ignored the oil light that came on in the dashboard of my vehicle. My vehicle was telling me that it needed my attention, and I kept putting it off and putting it off until one day my piston seized up and my engine broke down. To make a long story short, my foolishness cost me several thousand dollars. Now, I'm certain that many of you are familiar with the term hangry. Hangry is when you're angry because you're hungry. You've been there, or you've maybe been with someone who has. They're short with you, they're, they're snapping at you, they're biting at you, and you're saying, what's going on? You, you, you seem tense today. And they say to you, oh, I'm just hangry. I, I skipped breakfast or I skipped lunch and I, I'm angry and I'm really feeling hungry and it's just getting to me. Now think about that. Something as simple as missing a meal can lead you to think, feel, say, or do things that you regret. 
If this tiny level of pain can twist your mind and warp your responses, imagine what pain at a more intense and prolonged level can do to you. The presence of pain, even a small amount, can do strange things to a human heart. It can do a lot worse than make you grumpy. It can twist your mind. It can warp your perspective. It can lead you to believe lies about yourself, about others, even about God. It can lead you to act upon those lies. It can lead you to destruction. And that's why we're suggesting that a first step to successfully navigating the presence of pain is to pay careful attention to what's going on within you. Because if you're not self-aware, you will self-destruct. You say, I paid careful attention to what's going on within me. I heard a couple annoying squeaks or I noticed a couple of blinking lights on my dashboard. So what do you do next? Secondly, when you recognize destructive habits or patterns, seek understanding. When you recognize destructive habits or patterns, set out on a journey, a journey to discover the answer to this next question. Why do you do what you do? Why do you do what you do? You're saying, Darren, what, what are you doing? In fact, some of you are going to pause and rewind this video. What did, he, did he just slap himself? Darren, what are you doing? We don't just randomly do things, do we? I mean, there are reasons why we do the things we do, even destructive, stupid things. So then, when you recognize the presence of destructive habits or patterns in your life, seek understanding. Ask yourself the question, why am I doing the things that I'm doing? Now, what I'm about to share next is a key insight when it comes to recognizing destructive habits and patterns. When you recognize the presence of destructive habits and patterns, realize that you are trying to accomplish something. Something within you believes that you want or need something. When you recognize the presence of destructive habits and patterns, realize you're trying to accomplish something. Something within you, be it consciously or subconsciously, believes that you want or need something. Now, this realization turned a switch on for me in my own life. When I began to connect the dots between what I was consciously doing on the outside and what I was subconsciously believing on the inside, I began to turn a corner towards healing. Recognizing this dynamic, I went on a self-reflective journey. I began by dividing my life into four main categories. First of all, how God made me. I looked at this whole area of how God made me, my personality, my gifts, my God-given talents and abilities and callings. And, and, and I listed these things on a sheet of paper. And then secondly, how others have impacted me. Now here I'm talking about the good the bad, the ugly. Listen, as you're watching me today, there are things in your life and you know that people have, have imparted good things into your life and you know that people have done things in your life that have harmed you, that have wounded you. In fact, they're flashing into your mind right now. Some things that you've tried to hide, some things you've tried to deny, things that perhaps have brought you great shame. On a sheet of paper, I began to list these things in my life. Things that people have done to me, whether they be good or whether they be bad. And thirdly, how I have responded to how others have impacted me. In other words, my healthy and my unhealthy responses. Again, pause here for a second and think of your own life. Things that people have done that have impacted you, good or bad, but then I had to own how I responded to them, even how I reacted to them, consciously, even subconsciously. And I had to list things in my life, even as a child, from a, a young boy on through my life. How did I respond to these situations in my life? The good situations and also the toxic situations. How did, how did I react to them? What did I choose to do knowingly and sometimes even unknowingly? And then the fourth area is the area of intentional, willful choices I've made in life. Meaning these aren't the subconscious things that I've done. I'm talking about the decisions that I've made over the years. Move here, don't move there. Marry them, don't marry them. I then use the advice of the Apostle Paul as my inspiration. 
In a world filled with lies, misdirection, and misinformation, Paul told the Corinthians what Christ followers do to combat deception in life. He said this, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Paul said, we demolish arguments, we take captive every thought, we discipline our minds, and we combat the lies. With that in mind, I determined to examine myself in these four key areas. With the help of trusted friends, skilled counselors, and the Spirit of God, I took a magnifying glass to my actions, my history, and my heart. I pondered the content of those four areas with the goal of deciding what to retain, what to reject, what to renounce, and where to repent. Now, during this exercise, I stumbled across a truth when it comes to forgiveness. For years, I thought that since I had forgiven someone, that meant that everything had been dealt with. I thought if it was forgiven, it was finished. But I came to realize that forgiveness, as vital as it is to the healing journey, forgiveness is only half the story. I came to realize that something that has been forgiven still has the power to harm. Now, this was a key insight for me. Something that I have forgiven still has the power to steal my joy, warp my thoughts, damage my self-understanding, and affect my actions. Think in these terms. You can forgive the person that shot you and still be affected by the bullet that has lodged within you. Sometimes healing requires that you do more than forgive. Sometimes healing requires that you address the damage that's embedded within you as a result of what happened to you. Now, this exercise of taking every thought captive to make it obedient to Christ led me to another discovery regarding why I was doing what I was doing. I discovered and I applied the truths of modern brain science. It was sitting in the office of a counselor when he explained to me the science of the brain and the prefrontal cortex, the neocortex, and the limbic system. And he explained to me that the, the prefrontal cortex, the neocortex, is where we do all of our rational thinking. That's where we do all of our logic and our reasoning. And then deep embedded into our brain is the limbic system. And the limbic is where we store our trauma and our emotion. The limbic is the source of our fight, flight, or freeze system. And he pointed out to me that we used to think that we were ruled by that front of our brain, but we've realized now that under stressful situations or when there's unresolved trauma stored in the limbic system, often the limbic overrides the neocortex, the prefrontal cortex. And he said, and we'll go against our moral code, we'll go against rational thinking because we're living out of our limbic system. And he pointed out that unresolved trauma has no shelf life. Meaning, an unresolved trauma acts and is as alive as if it just happened today. If you don't resolve, tr resolve trauma in your life, he pointed out, it's still there in your subconscious and it's still feeding your mind and affecting your behavior. Well, today, we're doing our best to answer the question, how do you cope with personal pain? And so far, we've learned that you need to pay careful attention to what's going on within you. What should you do when you discover destructive habits or destructive patterns? We just learned that when you discover such things, you should seek understanding. Why do you do what you do? Which brings us to a third insight that I'd like to share with you today. Living in a world that's permeated with pain is not easy. Dealing with the debris of pain and suffering in life is not easy. I can testify from my own personal experience that while taking these first two steps will provide a lot of insight and unleash a lot of freedom, it will also provide you with a lot of challenges. Digging up and confronting lies, digging up and confronting sinful patterns is like turning over rocks in a garden. Be prepared to face a lot of ugly little things. There's a reason why we have buried or denied or hidden these things. It's because there is pain or guilt or shame associated with these things. But healing them requires facing them. And that's why this third insight is so crucial to the healing journey. 
A third key to coping with personal pain is to immerse yourself in a study of the character and nature of God. Immerse yourself. Dive deep into a study of who God is. Saturate your soul with the knowledge of the unconditional love and kindness of God towards you. Now, the enemy of your soul is going to do all that he can to keep you enslaved and to keep you believing the lies that he's been feeding your mind. When you face the pain in your life, the enemy is going to try to tell you that God's angry at you, that you're worthless, that you're shameful, that you're rejected, that you're damaged goods, that God's given up on you and God doesn't love you. Lies. All of them. Every single one of them. Lies, all lies. And what's the best way? What's the only way to combat a lie? The answer is truth. Remember, we demolish arguments in every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Paul is saying we combat lies by demolishing them with the hammer of truth. The truth that comes with the knowledge of God. Writing to Christ followers in the ancient city of Ephesus, Paul gave this famous description of how to battle the lies of the enemy. He said, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. So you're not doing this in your strength. He says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Now, notice that the nature of our battle, notice what it is. We're battling against the devil's schemes. Now, Paul originally wrote this letter in ancient Greek, and the word schemes is a translation of the ancient Greek word methodia. It was the word for deceit or craftiness, trickery. The devil's chief weapon is deception. It's lies. So using the metaphor of a Roman soldier's armor, Paul tells the Ephesian Christ followers that they need to put on their own set of armor to stand against the devil's lies. And what's the first piece of armor that Paul describes? Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Successfully coping with pain in your life requires filling your mind with truth. In the same letter, the Apostle Paul told them what he prayed when he prayed for them. He says, I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure with the fullness of God. Paul prayed that the Ephesian Christ followers would saturate their souls with the knowledge of the unconditional love and the kindness of God. Paul prayed this because he understood that having this truth embedded within us will act as a net to catch us when the darkness tries to pull us deeper. Like a bungee cord limits how far one can fall before it pulls them back up again, a knowledge of the love and kindness and grace of God limits the depths to which our souls can plunge. Now, many a time when we're navigating our pain, our temptation is to withdraw from church life, to withdraw from gathering with other believers and cocooning alone. Please hear me. This is a trap of the enemy. Don't do it. The church of Jesus Christ is the body of Christ. We're here to support and strengthen and stand beside one another. You will not gain a deeper experience of the knowledge of God by running away from the people of God. Today, we're doing our best to answer the question, how do you cope with personal pain? So far, we've done our best to lay down three personal and pastoral suggestions. One, pay careful attention to what's going on within you, because if you're not self-aware, you'll self-destruct. Two, when you recognize destructive habits or patterns, seek understanding. Ask yourself the question, why am I doing what I'm doing? And thirdly, immerse yourself in a study of the character and nature of God. Fill your mind with truth. Which brings us to the fourth and final piece of advice that we'll share today, and that's this. 
take care of your body. Take care of your body. Now, think with me for a moment about what happened in the Garden of Gethsemane. It's the night that Jesus is arrested. But before he's arrested, he's in the garden with the disciples. And he says to Peter, James, and John, you wait here while I go over there and pray, and you pray with me, intercede for me. And each time Jesus went back to check on them, they had fallen asleep. And what was Jesus' observation regarding the root of their problem? Jesus said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh, the body, is weak. Jesus was describing a dynamic that every human being deals with. To be human is to be a body-soul composite. To be human is to be an immaterial soul enmeshed with a body, a material body. Now, any worldview that pictures the soul as good and the body as evil is not a biblical worldview. The body is not something that we just tolerate today, but we're going to discard in the future. No. Now, the body will be temporarily set aside at death, but it's going to be resurrected in the future and you'll have it forever. To be human is to be an embodied person. But here's the challenge for us when we're coping with our pain. A weakened body places strain upon the soul. You see, your soul is enmeshed with your body. So what happens to your body affects what happens to your soul. That's one of the reasons why we should take care of our bodies. Now, if your body is the source of your pain, do what you can to address your body. Do what you can to repair your body. Now, if your body is not the source of your pain, you still need to pay attention to your body. Because when you neglect your body, it negatively affects your soul. So then, no matter the ultimate source of your pain, always do your best to take care of your body. Well, let's conclude. Today, we've done our best to answer the question, so how do you cope with personal pain? From a personal and pastoral perspective, I've sought to offer a way forward for anyone who's navigating a painful pathway. Sometimes the reasons for and the sources of the pain in our lives are obvious. Other times, the reasons and the sources are more mysterious. Either way, the pain is the same, isn't it? It's forever present. And all of this brings us to our conclusion, to today's big idea where we summarize the teaching in one phrase. Now, as I prepared this teaching, as I pondered how I would conclude this message, I thought to myself, Okay, if I was sitting across from someone at a coffee shop, someone who is trying to cope with the pain in their life, what's the simplest piece of advice I could give them? And the answer that came to my mind was this, and it's going to stand as our big idea today. How do you cope with personal pain? Seek God for an answer to the pain. Trust God with the purpose for the pain. Seek God for an answer to the pain. Trust God with the purpose for the pain. Coping with personal pain as a follower of Jesus is all about living in the middle of that tension. You're seeking God for an answer to your pain, all the while you're trusting God with the purpose for your pain. You're actively looking for relief, all the while acknowledging and accepting the fact that God knows what you don't know and that God uses painful circumstances for powerful purposes. Are you coping with personal pain? Listen, as you're watching me today, maybe there's something going on in your life or there's something embedded in your past and it haunts you and it harasses you and it's still hurting you. Listen, I get it. I understand. Pain is prevalent in our lives. All of us deal with it at some level in some way. But God loves you. And know that we as a congregation are here for you. You don't have to hide from your pain. When I think of Broadway Church, I think of all the vast ministries and, and, and individuals who are here to come alongside you. I know our Celebrate Recovery Ministry, our Genesis Process Ministries are powerful tools, tools I myself have access to see healing in my own life. So if you're seeking to cope with personal pain in your life, listen. Seek healing. Trust God. Know that He has not abandoned you. 
Know that he is at work within you, even in the midst of your pain. And know that he does all things well. Let's pray together right now as we conclude. God, I don't claim to understand all that's going on in my life, but I know that I can trust you. I know that you have shown yourself faithful. While I was still rejecting you, you died for me. You didn't wait for me to get better. You didn't wait for me to come to a realization of the truth. You loved me before I even knew you. While I was still rejecting you, you were patient with me. You were reaching out for me. So you know what's going on inside of me. You know all about me. Psalm 139 says, you've searched me and you know me, but you know before I rise, you know when I'm sleeping, before a word's on my tongue, you know it completely. You know everything about me and you love me. So God, I lift my pain to you. I lift my difficulties to you. I'm asking you to show me how I can have healing in my life. And I'm trusting you with the purpose for it all, that somehow you're gonna use it for your glory. Maybe you're watching me today and you're not yet a follower of Jesus. God is not an active presence within your life. God is someone distant from your life. You need to know he does not want to be distant. He wants to be personal and present in your life. That's why he sent Jesus, to cleanse you of your sin, to, to heal you of your rebellion and your pain, to come and live his spirit in your spirit in an intimate relationship. He's willing to cleanse you, to forgive you, and come and live within you. If you'd like him to do that, then pray this prayer with me right now. God, I acknowledge my rebellion, my pain, my sin, my sickness. I don't want to live this way anymore. And so I ask you to come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me of my rebellion and fill me with your spirit. Help me to take the next step in my walk in life with you present, empowering me, healing me, guiding me and directing me. And God, would you give me the courage to act on this decision that I'm making right now by telling somebody, by, by reaching out to your church, to your people, so that they can help me take the next step in my journey. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen means so be it, or that's right. If you prayed that prayer with me, the best advice I can give you is to text the number on the screen right now. You should see a number on the screen. Text that number and someone will be on the other end of that phone, not to phone you and talk to you or, or not to make you a member of Broadway Church, but to help you in any way we can, to text back and offer any help or help you take the next step in your journey. Thank you for being with us today in our You Asked For It series. I hope to see you next week when we tackle another tough question that you are asking us to answer. God bless you. Thank you for being with us at Broadway Church today. Thank you so much for joining us at Church Online this week. If you have any prayer needs or requests, please text the number on the screen. Or if you're new to Broadway and you're looking to connect deeper, you can email new at broadwaychurch.com and a pastor will reply and help you get connected to a place where you can best serve and grow. As I mentioned earlier, here are some discussion questions you can use based on today's sermon. What are the dashboard warning signs people have in their lives? What are some common lies and schemes the enemy uses on people? What areas in your life are temptations to withdraw from God and or God's people? What possible purposes had God for using pain in people's lives? And what are the things you've forgiven but are still healing from? We pray that by engaging deeper into today's message, it will help you along in your spiritual walk. Stick around for just a little longer as we transition into a time of communion. Hey there, my name is Andy, and we're so glad that you can be with us for communion. This is a great time to get your communion elements, whether it is a bread or a juice. Feel free to grab that right now. And I'm just wanting to get right into God's word about communion. The Bible says that when Jesus was betrayed, that he went into upper room and he spent some time with his disciples. And more likely, he broke the bread before he had a supper with them, which means that his body was being broken for you and I. Jesus took on our brokenness. He took on our pain. Now, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that we live in a broken world, don't we? 
We have all experienced brokenness, but Jesus took on our brokenness through communion. And so as we take communion together, I want you to reflect on how God has healed your brokenness. Now, you might be still going through broken things or broken relationships or even broken thoughts, whatever that looks like for you. But remember today, as we take communion together, that Jesus took on your brokenness. What amazing reality. He took on my brokenness as he broke the bread. We also see after dinner with his friends in the upper room that he took a cup and that cup represented his blood. Now that might be a weird concept, taking on his blood, but it represents a new relationship with God. And we see with Jesus that Jesus poured out himself so that we can experience new life. Jesus puts it this way in John 10, 10, that I have come to give life and life to the full. He, he poured out his life so you and I can experience real life, true life, life to the full. Now I want you to reflect on that for a second because as Jesus poured out his life, he calls us to pour out our lives to others. So not only does he take on our brokenness and pour out himself so that we can experience real life, he calls you and I to be not only a broken people, but a poured out people. A poured out to reach out to the world around us that experience brokenness. So as we take communion together, let's remember together why Jesus died and how he's given us real life. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22, it says this, when he given thanks, he said, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So if you have an element or a cracker or some bread with you, let's partake together, participating in Jesus's broken body, bruised, manipulated, broken for you and I, so that we can experience real life. Let's partake together. And in verse 33 of chapter 11 in 1 Corinthians, it says this, in the same way after supper, he took the cup. This represents a cup. Maybe you have juice at home or water. And he says this, this cup is the new covenant, which is my blood. Do this whenever you drink in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's partake together. What's amazing in this passage of scripture is that we can find hope in God that he will come again for you and I. That eternal life is not just here and now, but eternal life is in the future that we can look forward to. Have a great Sunday. Bless you. Thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Megan and I am the Vancouver Campus Kids Pastor. We have a ton of stuff happening here at Broadway for you and your family, so why don't you check these things out? Do you have a dance background? Did you know dancing can also be an act of worship? Broadway's dance ministry is coming back. We are looking for experienced dancers who are passionate about dancing and use their talents to serve God. If you are interested, please send us a video of you dancing. It doesn't have to be a professional recording. A simple video on your phone would work. TikTok doesn't count. Contact dance at broadwaychurch.com. Episode 14 of the Broadway Church Leadership Podcast is available wherever you download your podcasts. Come and hear the conclusion of our three-part discussion on how to reach the next generation. Our next-gen staff at Broadway Church have a great discussion about loving our students well. Parents, you will especially appreciate the material covered in this podcast. On September 17th, we are calling all our leaders and volunteers at Broadway Church to join us for our first ever in-house conference called Broadway Leadership Day to equip and empower you and your ministry. We will have a couple of main sessions and then breakout sessions for specific ministries where you can connect with each other. The cost is $10 for lunch. Please register online through our website. And if you are looking at volunteering at Broadway, feel free to join us too. 
We are so excited to invite you to Kids Camp this year. Join us for Knights of North Castle, quest for the King's armor, as we discover how to be strong in the Lord by exploring how we put on the armor of God. We'll be running from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. July 18th to the 22nd. Preteen Camp will also be running during this same week. Stay tuned for more details. For more information and to register, go to bway.ca slash kidscamp. Join us for the next adult Bible class series called Resilient Faith. This class will run for four weeks and will go over the lessons from the book of Daniel. It begins July 3rd at 10.15 a.m. in the Lower Auditorium at the Vancouver campus. Check out our website for more information or contact discipleship at broadwaychurch.com. You Asked For It, Yaffe, is our summer sermon series where we tackle your questions. And we are so excited to offer a midweek small group to discuss the Yaffe message from that week. We are calling it Yaffe Talks. If you are looking for good coffee and good conversation with good friends, we would love to have you join us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. at the Vancouver campus in the Lower Auditorium, starting on June 29th. Sign up and details are on the website. If you missed anything that I said, you can visit our website, broadwaychurch.com, for more information on our ministries and events. And while you're there, make sure to connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.